Here's a question. What do you want the future to look like? Personally, I'm hoping for instant teleportation, hoverboards, and free chocolate for all by 2050. Sounds like a bit of a stretch, I know, but it's nothing compared to what people over 100 years ago thought life would look like today. From robotic helpers and super schools to flying firemen, some of the predictions are hilarious, but others are surprisingly accurate. Well, it's time to separate science facts from science fiction as we take a look at what people in the past thought we'd be doing today. In the year 2000, France won the European Football Championship and overhauled its prison system. But neither of these major events were what French artist Jean-Marc Cotet had predicted. And that's because Cotet was alive more than 100 years earlier, in 1899. In that year, he designed a series of postcards depicting France in the year 2000 for the 1900 Paris Exhibition. At this point in time, Ferris wheels, diesel engines, talking films, and escalators were just anticipated inventions. In Cotet's drawings, though, things got a bit more extreme. By 2000, Cotet predicted that schools would be using some sort of machine to pump knowledge into the brains of the students. Judging by this postcard, one student would crank the knowledge machine, which would grind up books, and the information inside them would be magically fed into the minds of their classmates, like some sort of mind-feeding paper shredder. So the school of the 2000s would be a place to kick back, relax, and just absorb information. Unless it was your turn to crank the machine. In reality, the closest thing we've developed to knowledge machines are computers and smart boards, and even with them, some subjects can still be tough to get your head around. Once school was out, you'd travel home as usual, but not by school bus, by gigantic seahorse. In the real world, seahorses only grow up to 14 inches tall, but by 2000, Cote believed they would be 10 times the size, have a strange golden metallic sheen, and be willing to ferry humans around the seabed. What did he think would make them grow so huge? Evolution? Radiation? Perhaps some weird human experiments? Whatever he thought, it looks exciting. But next time I'm crossing the water, I think I'll stick with a boat. Giant golden seahorses won't be the only innovation involving the animal kingdom. Cote also predicted the invention of baby chicken-making machines. It looks simple enough. Insert an egg into the machine and, five minutes later, you've got a live bird walking around the farm. Now, in the 21st century, getting a chicken from an egg to your dinner plate is a process that's helped along by industrial farming. But a chicken-making machine that could speed up the development process, like playing a chicken god? Even by modern science standards, that's clucking insane. What about entertainment in the year 2000? Well, Cote didn't leave that out either. In 1889, most live music meant attending orchestral concerts or theatrical operas. According to Cote, we'd still be doing that in 2000, except the music would be played by machines. That's right, a robot orchestra rather than a human one. While we don't have any robots controlling entire armies of instruments yet, we do have electronic music and, uh, whatever Grimes identifies as these days. So even if we're not going to the robo-opera, Cote still predicted that technology would revolutionize the way we make and listen to music. But then Cote wondered, if robots could be musicians, why not barbers as well? In this image, hairdressers of the 2000s have been replaced by machines designed to trim and groom people to perfection. Now, I've still got a human barber, but machine grooming isn't as far away as you might imagine. In 2012, Giraffe Technologies completed a prototype multi-arm UGV that, with a shaver attached to it, allowed its user to remotely shave another human's head. While that's impressive, the final look is anything but. It seems like there are some jobs that still need to be done by human hands. 
Speaking of human hands, be sure to use yours to hit those like and subscribe buttons below, unless you have a robot do it for you. All done? Great. Now, what weird prediction have we got next? One thing people would rather keep their hands off, however, is cleaning. I know some people enjoy it, but not everyone is a Virgo. Cote imagined people in the 21st century would have found a way to tackle such trivial tasks with machines, ones that'd be able to scrub and polish simultaneously. All you'd have to do is stand there, steering it, pulling it. Uh, either way, that entire contraption looks weirdly terrifying. Fortunately, the present day offers only Roombas. While smaller, cuter, and guided automatically by proximity sensors, Roombas can only hoover a floor. But if you're after something as terrifying as Cote's machine, why not stick a knife on your Roomba, like this one? Just imagine the terror as it scuttles around your house searching for its next victim. Hmm, maybe I'll stick to cleaning the floors myself. Beyond cleaning, travel, and school, Cote also had some expectations of what France's emergency services might look like in 100 years. Instead of using horses and wagons on the ground to put out fires, winged firemen would swoop in to save the day. That's right, flying firemen. Of course, they're not a reality in the 21st century. Unless you're in Dubai. In 2016, the Dubai Civil Defense signed a multi-million dollar contract to bring their fire services to the skies to help quickly tackle situations in high-rise buildings. Sadly, Dubai won't be using the cool butterfly wings depicted by Cote. Instead, they've opted for jet engines that will enable them to reach heights of 3,000 feet at speeds of almost 45 miles per hour. Talk about rapid response. Back in 1900, if you wanted to text someone, you'd have to write down your message, then wait 84 years until the invention of the phone signal. I'm just kidding. You'd have to send a letter through a physical mailing system. By 2000, though, Cote expected the Postal Service to follow the fire brigade to the skies. Using individual flying devices that look like they've been designed by Da Vinci, letters would be hand-delivered straight to your three-story balcony. As fun as this looks, today most of our messages take place in the digital world. From email to texting and WhatsApp, it only takes a few seconds and the click of a button to send a message like this anywhere in the world. Oh, uh, pretend you didn't see that. Now, do you think swimming is a tired old gimmick of the past? Isn't it time we developed a new way to navigate our bodies through liquid? Wouldn't it be much easier if water was just, like, land? Well, in 1900, the year after Cote's predictions, another futurist had the same thought. Using balloons filled with a magical substance that both lifts you out of the water but stops you floating into space, the lakes of today would become the parks of tomorrow. Even horses would be getting in on the fun. While balloon-supported lake walking hasn't made a splash just yet, we do have giant inflatable Zorb balls that allow you to run around on a lake without sinking. That's just for us humans, though. Sorry, horses of the world, but you'll have to wait another hundred years, I guess. Also from the 1900s, the ladies' home journal writer John Elfrith Watkins Jr. had some predictions of his own for the 21st century. He starts off well, correctly predicting people will get taller and grow older thanks to scientific advancements in healthcare. But he also predicted that by 2001, the letters C, X, and Q would no longer be part of the alphabet, because everyone would be spelling by sound alone. So a cat would be a cat, an X-ray would be an X-ray, and Her Majesty would be the Queen? Man, famous streamer XQC would be out of a name entirely. If you lived in Watkins' American future, how do you think you'd send packages? Through the mail like a 20th century ape? Nope, 
Instead, Watkins predicted pneumatic tubes would connect the private houses of the wealthy and then eventually all homes. So you'd be able to send packages from home to home without ever leaving your house. As cool and no doubt costly as that would be, today you can order almost anything you want over the internet without stepping a single foot outside your front door. Although, when you get your package is still something of a mystery, as the current American mailing system usually relies on USPS, UPS, or FedEx. Ugh. Considering predictions in the 1900s played with the alphabet, postal service, and travel, what form did people think communication would take? Far from Cote's flying messengers, one artist actually thought up something surprisingly accurate – a retro-futuristic video call device. It's practically a smartphone. When we video call today, we don't have butlers serving lemonade or personal aircraft or matching sky suits, which is disappointing. However, if we fast forward to 1964, picture phones first popped into existence. Just like the 1900s imagining, people could talk face-to-face -face over two screens. Though the device wasn't mobile, it was installed in a booth. This invention eventually fueled the development of Skype, FaceTime, and more recently, Zoom, where you can share a face-to-face -face call with up to 1,000 people at any time. To think without the amazing imaginings of the 1900s, we might still just be calling people up on the phone like cavemen. Now, if we fast forward a bit to the 1930s, we can take a look at the predictions of one F. E. Smith, a lawyer and parliamentarian. He was a pretty, uh, eccentric guy, and his forecasts for the future were nothing less. Over the course of his life, Smith had seen cars become widespread in society. With the expected rise of air travel, however, he believed automobiles would be replaced by personal airplanes that were as reliable and cheap as a car. Yes, we do have low-cost air travel in the 2020s, New York to Miami for less than $30, bargain. But we're still quite a way off everyone having their own personal plane. In 2014, there was only one privately owned plane for every 19,500 people on Earth. So that future is more of a distant dream. Okay, get ready for a weird question. Have you ever wondered why we have two eyes? Aside from providing us with a spare should one get damaged, having two eyes allows us to perceive depth and increases our field of vision. Pretty essential functions, right? Well, not according to Dr. Thomas Shashtid. This doctor proclaimed in 1934 that, over time, the bridge of the nose would collapse and a super eye would form in the center of all human faces. That's right, Shashtid expected us to evolve into human cyclopses. He saw two main benefits of the cycloptic super eye. First, we'd be able to perceive forms of energy that were hidden to us, and second, we'd see colors and motion more clearly. Now, before you get too excited, Shashtid expected this to happen in distant centuries, so it's nothing to worry about right now. Having said that, Shashtid probably expected our eyes to be a bit closer together by this point in time, so if you do notice your eyes edging towards your nose, I'd just book an appointment with your nearest eye doctor. Wow, in the 1930s, people had some massive expectations about what the future would look like. But what about the 1950s? Even though they were a little more technologically advanced, leading experts in this era had a few wacky ideas. In terms of travel in the 2000s, if it wasn't a Jetson-style private flying car, then it was zipping across the Earth on rails. It was around this time magnetic levitation, or maglev technology, was first developed and patented. The concept proved magnetic propulsion, or linear motion, could transport a vehicle over a track at speeds of up to 310 miles per hour. This amazing breakthrough led scientists to believe 
that future forms of transport would be maglev mad. But they weren't quite right. While some of the fastest trains in the world, like Japan's bullet trains, do use maglev technology, the tracks are costly to implement. So costly that Japan is currently on track to spend a staggering $64 billion on just 180 miles of maglev track. So until we find a cheaper way of making maglev available to the masses, the rest of the world is stuck with regular old public transport like buses. <sighs> but it wasn't just travel that experts of the 1950s had high hopes for. By 2000, they predicted that the world of entertainment would be on another level. We'd have long turned off our radios and would have switched on our four-dimensional color TVs. Not only would the images look like they were popping out of the screen, but the room would fill with the aroma of whatever was being shown. Now, 3D TVs were first developed back in 1981, and even though they hit the mainstream in the 2010s, by 2016, they were just a novelty, and most models stopped being produced. As far as 4D goes, smell -a vision a process by which smells were released into cinemas during the projection of a film, made its one and only appearance in the 1960 film Scent of Mystery. Unfortunately, some of the smells were released on delay, so they didn't match up with what was on the screens. The mixture of different smells also made people nauseous, and the loud hissing noise the dispersal machine made ruined the experience for many others. After it was written off as something of a failure, we haven't quite conquered this type of 4D future, and I'm not entirely sure we'll ever want to. So, some predictions have been very close to becoming real, but not everyone can be that prescient. One article from Popular Mechanics in 1950 claimed that by the 21st century, sawdust, table linen, and underwear would be recycled through chemical factories to produce food. That's right, a tasty meal made from your dad's recycled underwear. Ugh. Razors would also be a thing of the past, and people would only shave with a specially formulated chemical solution. I mean, they weren't entirely wrong. Hair removal cream does exist these days, but anyone who's ever used it knows that stuff smells worse than a garbage dump that's been set on fire. What about regular household chores, like doing the dishes? Well, in this future from the 1950s, dishes are made of a cheap plastic that melts when it meets hot water, so the dishes can be washed right down the drain. And yet here we are in the 21st century trying to put less plastic in the ocean because it's already full of the stuff without this insane invention. Okay, what about cleaning the house? Easy, just turn on your trusty hose and wash the house down, because everything you own is now waterproof. That's right, everything. Couch, waterproof. TV, waterproof. Children, 100% waterproof. Plus, you have a plug hole as a standard feature in each and every room to drain all the dirt away. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know anyone in this century who has all their belongings waterproofed, let alone the money to afford the bank-breaking water bill a method like this would rack up. So far, we've looked at predictions for life hundreds of years in the future. Although, I can't help but think that if these predictions aimed closer to their own time, they might be more accurate. Like, 10 years in the future, for instance. Well, a 1960 article published in American Weekly did exactly that. To them, 1970 was going to be a place where secretaries no longer typed, but spoke into their typewriters. Yep, speech recognition technology a whole 40 years before the likes of Siri and Alexa. Amazingly, they weren't far off. By the mid-1980s, IBM had created a voice-activated typewriter called the Tangora, which had a 20,000-word vocabulary. Wow, if they were nearly right about that, what else did American Weekly predict? Well, apparently, the modern 2000 soldier would look like 
and I quote, Superman from Mars. Sorry, what? Did they expect soldiers to be clad in capes with bright red underwear over their uniforms? This might have posed a few problems with missions requiring camouflage. Fortunately, it was just referring to advances made in the gear available to troops. Apparently, soldiers would be issued with rocket belts that would enable them to jump rivers, leap to the top of houses, and reach speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. Did people from the 1960s really think 21st century combat would look like panels from a DC comic? Uh, sadly, this sort of advanced military technology doesn't currently exist that we know of, though I personally wouldn't be opposed to watching an army of supermen in action. Past Americans were an optimistic, futuristic bunch. But what about other major world superpowers and their predictions of the future? Well, according to a futuristic film strip from the Soviet Union back in the 1960s, a 2017 Soviet Union would be a truly amazing place. The Union's polar regions would be populated with cavernous, under-ice cities, heated by the Earth's natural thermal energy to create an eternally summery climate. There's no word on how they'd get all that natural light down there, though, which is probably why these cities never materialized. Weather control was another futuristic feature that the Soviets thought they might have a handle on by 2017. From a control station in the sky, Soviet officers would be able to pacify hurricanes and destroy storms with the press of a button. It's a really neat idea, but sadly, by the time the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, there were no such devices in action. But something did come out of the Soviet Union that would serve as inspiration for technology further down the line. In 1966, Boris Grishin invented a robotic butler that could answer the telephone, control the temperature in his apartment, remind him of important events, provide the time, date, and even had a radio. It was a truly amazing piece of tech. But at a cumbersome 220 pounds, robotic butlers weren't a feature of many households until the 2000s. While they don't look like something out of Doctor Who, virtual assistants like Amazon's Alexa and the Google Home Hub are commonplace around the world. Using voice command technology, they can do just about everything Boris's bot could do and are just a fraction of the size. Okay, so both the Americans and the Soviets missed the mark in the 1960s on a bunch of levels. However, there's one prediction from the 60s that was so accurate, it's scary. The use of the internet. In 1966, this footage depicting life in 1999 shows off a future home computer console that's a remarkably accurate portrayal of what was to come. It even explains how internet shopping, banking, and correspondence would be commonplace, with households owning multiple consoles and computers to fit their lifestyles. That's pretty incredible, considering at this point, it'd be another 13 years before the internet was even born. But can other predictions from 1966 keep those standards up? Well, according to a 1966 Time magazine article, by the year 2000, the wheel, one of mankind's most important inventions, would be obsolete. Yes, the wheel. Why wouldn't we use it, I hear you ask? Well, travel would no longer be limited to the road because we'd have developed hovercrafts that could fly through the air. So, no cars, only hover cars. No bikes, only hover bikes. No skateboards, only hover boards. This sounds like a fun floating future, but I can't help but notice that here in the 2020s, we're still heavily reliant on roads and machines with wheels. Man, that's really brought my expectations back down to earth. But not every 60s prediction assumed wheels would be a thing of the past. Have you heard of the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey? From 1968, it's one of the best-known films which depicts a future society. The author of the book it was based on, Arthur C. Clarke, 
had endless predictions for the future up his sleeves, including the intriguingly named Untethered Homes. Clark believed that, in the future, our homes would be able to move wherever we wanted them to. Not a mobile home or an RV, but an entire house, complete with its own power and water supply, which could be wheeled to another location with ease. Communities would use this functionality to migrate south for the winter and return north when the weather got warmer. Like geese, but the size of houses with wheels. It sounds funny, but Clark wasn't too far off. The recent tiny home craze sweeping the western world has seen people sacrificing space for the ability to shift their home wherever and whenever they want. Although not everyone thought houses would be made to move. This architectural vision created by James Wines back in 1981, called high-rise homes, predicted the eventual use of high-rise open-plan buildings as housing, with typical suburban neighborhoods reimagined in a Jenga-like design. Now compare that image to this real-life building in Milan, Italy. Known as the Bosco Verticale, which means vertical forest in Italian, it's been around since 2014. The building is completely self-sufficient, running off renewable energy, solar panels, and filtered water waste. While it's not a high-rise comprised of individual houses, the Bosco Verticale is an interesting, modern, and especially green spin on James's design. Now let's jump forward to 1988. What did 80s kids think 2013 would look like? Well, one article in the Los Angeles Times Magazine had some eerily accurate predictions. By 2013, there'd be injections for younger-looking skin, funny animations sent via email, fiber optics connecting computers all over the world, and on-demand music and movies from the comfort of your own home. Today, we can match that up to collagen injections, GIFs, the internet, and streaming services. That's a pretty perfect set of predictions. Still, there's one more 80s innovation that we've really adopted in the 21st century, and that's the world of virtual reality, also known as VR. In the 1980s, NASA heavily championed VR, with helmet-mounted displays, power gloves, 3D sights, and sounds that were supposed to make immersive environments a new frontier. But sadly, it didn't happen, because the technology wasn't mature enough. The helmets and their optics were too heavy, the computers were too slow, and the touch feedback systems rarely worked. The only thing that was consistently real about VR was the motion sickness. Fast forward to the modern day, though, with computers that are thousands of times faster than their 80s counterparts, and the applications of VR are endless. While NASA now use VR environments so detailed they can help train astronauts for space shuttle missions, it's used by the rest of the world for, uh, let's say escapism. Whether it's playing video games, virtually visiting a different house, or even just watching TV, I don't think this is what NASA hoped we'd be using their new frontier of technology for. Man, the predictions of the past had some pretty high hopes for us. But do you have any predictions for what might happen in 2100? Let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching.